Great, and thank you, Vicki. That uh, $25,000, um, the take-up rate of even 149 is amazing. Um, but my name is Ross Yednock, and I am with the Community Economic Development Association of Michigan. Um, and we are uh, a statewide trade association. Uh, we've got a uh, statewide trade association of community development groups and organizations, individuals. We have a lot of uh, community action agencies are members. Uh, folks are involved in affordable housing, uh, downtown development, uh, asset building work. And as part of, um, and this is what Vicki had mentioned, a little bit about her organization, there's some similarities there. We um, are involved or coordinate several statewide efforts. Some of those are listed on the screen right now, the Michigan Foreclosure Task Force, the Vacant Properties Campaign, Microenterprise, the Rural Council, and um, I kind of wear two hats here. I direct all of our economic opportunity initiatives, and I also coordinate the Michigan Economic Impact Coalition, which is um, Michigan's version of KISA. Uh, we are uh, a statewide collaborative of primarily VITA or volunteer income tax assistance preparer practitioners. We've got some policymakers, educators, and advocates. And the goal of um, the MEIC is to really link clients with um, free tax preparation and asset building services. Unlike KISA, though, our members are the ones who are the VITA clients um, or the VITA grantees with the IRS. We do not, um, we are not a practitioner site. We just coordinate policy issues. Um, there we go. Some of this has been covered, so I'll go over this real quickly, but what a VITA site, it stands for Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Site or Assistance. Um, free income tax preparation for families with incomes of $50,000 or less. Um, those are the IRS guidelines. Um, so it's not just EITC or just uh, child tax credit. Uh, we actually in Michigan have a whole lot of VITA sites that do um, Michigan-only returns because we've got a lot of uh, special credits for um, populations in Michigan. So they, they have no federal tax liability, can't claim the federal EITC, but still can go to a VITA site and get their taxes done. Um, what's critical is that all the, the VITA sites, you get real quality volunteers. They're prepared by the IRS, um, trained by the IRS, and certified by the IRS. Um, why VITA? And uh, this, a lot of this has gone, um, been gone over earlier, but it's a no-cost option. It really, when you're talking about these communities, you're talking about folks who are earning a very you know, small wage over the course of the year or have very little income, and um, $200 in tax preparation fees can take a huge chunk out of that, that person's income. When you factor in things like a refund anticipation loan, which are the uh, short-term high-cost loans to get your uh, access to your tax dollars a day or two early um, or you know the next day after the taxes are done by a pay preparer um, that's more money out of the pocket uh, a couple things we found in Michigan and why uh, CEDAM um, has become involved with VITA and uh, coordinating the MIC is you know, looking back um, a few years ago in tax numbers about seven percent of all Michigan taxpayers took out um, a refund anticipation loan where um, thirty percent of all of our EITC filers did. They made up, you know, two thirds of the whole refund anticipation loan marketplace. So right there, by going to a VITA site, you're able to save that money because refund anticipation loans are not offered at VITA sites. Um, other things, and Janet had mentioned this, the economic impact. We did a study a few years ago and found that for every dollar we bring in the Michigan in federal earned income tax credit, it generates $1.67 in new economic activity. So that was quite a big uh, you know, return on investment, coupled with um, the figures that about 20 to 25 percent of people fail to claim the EITC. Michigan's actually lucky. We have a lower rate that's closer to about 18 percent, but every year it's estimated that Michigan families are leaving between 90 million and 220 million dollars in federal tax relief in Washington, D.C. So that's the macro importance of VITA. 
the micro is, again, it's money in the pocket. And other studies have shown, um, this one out of New York, that um, the families who claim the EITC and go to VITA sites, you know, oftentimes because of the, the tax credit is refundable and um, can be upwards of $6,000, so I think this year it's $58.91, that oftentimes makes up you know, 30% of that family's household income over the course of a year. So it's a large chunk of change and really does provide an opportunity to um, help a low-income person um, come up with some financial planning and savings and asset building because they have some real money there that they can actually do some planning with. Um, the next slide is um, the difference between VITA and virtual VITA. Uh, VITA is brick and mortar. It's, you know, you you need certain amounts of tables and spaces, and you need the physical location, you know, the, the, the printers, all of that stuff needs to be able to be hooked up and maintained. And Vicki had mentioned, you know, the difference between mobile sites and ad hoc sites. What a virtual VITA site is, is um, simply put, it's not face-to-face -face in uh, person to person. Uh, it's the same approach. It's still IRS trained volunteers doing the tax prep but they don't meet the, the client actually face-to-face. -face. Um, technology is used to connect the VITA volunteer uh, preparer with the client, and that can be internet, it can be fax, it can be video conferencing. Um, the, I'm going to talk about uh, primarily the pilot we did here in Michigan, which was a video version of that, and that's where it becomes face-to-face. -face. Um, why virtual VITA is the next slide. and. What we have found in Michigan is nationally um, only about 3%, uh, and these numbers are from a year or two ago, uh, of all taxpayers who would qualify for VITA services, so that's the people earning 50000 and below, actually take advantage of them. So the other 97% of the population who could get this free tax assistance and keep money in their pockets, some may be doing it on their own, some may be going to a pay preparer. Both of those are fine options, but we're not meeting the need that could be out there. Um, as such, VITA has limited outreach in rural communities. What we have not been, and I really enjoyed listening to the Kentucky presentation, um, as my next few slides will show in a second, um, there is a big um, gap between coverage of our VITA sites in Michigan and our rural communities. And part of that's because of the concentration of resources. You know, our, um, for those familiar with the Michigan map, you've got south, southern Michigan has a population, whereas northern Michigan gets more rural, and consequently there are less um, VITA uh, free tax prep options for folks up there. Um, and perhaps one of, the, I think, the best ways, and we've, we're, we're really excited to see how this um, evolves in the next few years is the way to really streamline resources. Um, our VITA program used to be funded quite well in Michigan, now it's not. Um, so maximizing resources um, is very critical. Next slide, we'll, um, we'll kind of get through these real quickly, but this slide shows you know, the population of Michigan, the greener parts, um, that, uh, that's, this is population per square mile. Uh, when you get down to the red, that's 50,000 people per square mile. When you get to the dark green, that's less than one person per square mile. Um, this slide shows where all our VITA sites are, which is a nice, you know, if you remember what the other slide looks like, all the VITA sites are where the people are also read on this side. Um, the next slide will show us um, poverty. Um, this is the number of people who are living in poverty, and all of that tends to be in and I listed all the counties that have 25,000 people or more living in poverty in them. Um, there are, I think, 17 or 18 there. When you go to the next slide, you will see that the counties with the highest percentage of poverty aren't the same. These are Houghton, Escoda, Clare, and Lake, which is the poorest county. Those are also four rural counties, whereas I think all but one or two of the others are uh, what I would consider rural. Um, and these VITA sites, you can see in blue there. So the coverage is not um, where it could be or should be, um, or we'd like to have it be. 